Hello everyone and welcome to our All Matters Financial podcast and today's subject is on succession planning for your business. Our guest speaker today is Stuart Carswell, one of our senior advisors and directors at Pareto. Stuart, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Alex, thank you and thank you everyone for listening. Uh, My name's Stuart Carswell. As Alex said, I'm one of the senior advisors, also a director at um, Pareto Financial Planning. I've been doing this job longer than I care to remember, but entered the industry in about 1997. Worked for various companies, but worked with John Stevenson and George Chantry since 2001 with Pareto from inception. Um, So I've been here man and boy. Excellent. Thanks, Stuart. So moving on to our topic for today then, what do you think that clients should think about when exiting a business? Well, to be honest, Alex, the the two questions I think anyone listening who's thinking about exiting their business should should ask themselves is, how much is enough and when's the right time? And what I mean by that is, how much is enough? How much income will you need once you exit the business? And when do you think the right time is? Now, those two questions don't have to be set in stone, but with those two questions, you can then start planning about how you're going to exit, is it going to be um, uh, EO, Employee Ownership Trust, excuse me for the acronym, is it going to be a trade sale, is it going to be what uh, some form of exit, some EMI, um, VCT, sale to private equity, so there's various options out there but the two main questions are how much is enough and when's the right time. What do you think is most important that clients should consider when they're leading into that exit? planning strategy? Well, if you've got the answer to those two questions in terms of how much you think is enough to maintain your standard of living. So let's just say, for example, you needed um, £10,000 per month. That's £120,000 a year at 4 5% return. Then you need to be looking at investing about £2.5 to £3 million, depending upon the return that you can get. And then if you're thinking, well, I'm looking at exiting by the time I'm age 60, then consider what's the value of your business today? And I would say speak to your accountant, get a proper valuation, have a word with the tax partner to see if there's any things you can do to restructure the company to mitigate tax. And also you may need to speak to the corporate finance um, people within the, your, your accountancy to, to say, well, my business is worth three million pound, but actually I need 10 million. And we do another podcast that I know that you were party to in terms of um, cash flow planning. And you made a good point on your podcast that people have got an arbitrary figure about how much they need to sell their business for. But actually, once you quantify it, then you can start making definitive plans upon how you're going to exit. That's great. Thanks, Stuart. I know um, looking at your exit strategy for clients has been a bit of a passion project for yours and you put together a really great guide at Pareto. Um, Thank you. You're welcome. Called the Business Risk Audit. Can you just tell us a little bit about what that is and what it does and how it helps people? Yeah, so the Business Risk Audit was a concept in terms of a lot of owner-managed businesses out there, the biggest asset is the business. It's not the pension, it's not the house, it's not the savings, it's not the investments. But it's the, the value of the business, but a lot of clients don't actually think about how they're going to exit. And they don't review the value of the business. So essentially the business uh, risk order is stating, let's have a look at the four main things. How much is enough to retire on? When's the right time? What's the value of your business today? And what value do you need, not what you want? And there is a difference between what you need and what you want. Um, and then once you've got those four questions answered, And again, we would work with your solicitor, we'd work with your accountant to establish this. Then we can look at what are the risks to you exiting your business at a specific time and place for a specific value. And certain things such as, do you have a proper shareholder agreement set up? Do you have some articles of association that enable you, God forbid, if anything was to happen, for certain things to take place? Do you have any key people within your company that if you're on the the path to exiting and something was to happen to them, would that affect the value or the potential exit? In terms of if there's shareholders, um, do you have something written into your agreement that should something happen, 
is there some form of buyout of shares on death or critical illness? So it's just having a look at the risks and then how we can mitigate those risks moving forward. And, and really, it's about protecting the sale. That's great. There's a lot, obviously a lot of things involved, isn't there, when you're considering your exit planning. It's not just what that bottom line figure is going to be. So when do you think you should start thinking about this process and all these different considerations you need to take into account? Well, I, I think it's easier said than done, but actually on the day you set up your business, the very next day, all directors and shareholders should be talking about where they think the business is going to go to and exiting. But again, that's in, that, that, that's in a world and a panacea where everything works out correctly. But I would be saying to everyone, at the next board meeting, at the next shareholder meeting, have a sit down and just discuss where everyone thinks that they want to be in terms of exit and what their succession plan is. And once you start discussing that, and again, going back to the two main questions, how much is enough and when's the right time, then get the accountants involved as early as possible to start looking at what the options are. Speak to your solicitor, make sure you've got watertight articles and shareholder agreements get us involved and we will sit down in a tripartite with the solicitor and accountant to make sure that your exit process is going to be as robust as possible. Okay, that's really interesting. I know you've worked with a lot of clients with their exit planning and strategy. This is probably a bit of a random question that wasn't on my initial agenda, but what do you think is the hardest thing for clients when they're looking at this exit strategy? And maybe it might not even be the financial side. Yep, yep. Well, I mean, there's three parts to any sale. There's the pre-sale, and a lot of clients, when they start thinking about selling the business, and usually that's when someone's come in and made an offer, which is far too late. But in the pre-sale, it's all about maximising the value of the business. But things can be done if you speak to the tax partner about restructuring, that actually you can get more by doing some simple things around structuring the company correctly. Then during the sale, you have got two, You need two good teams around you. The first team is your internal team, so a good ops director, a good finance director, because 70% of all business sales fall through. And while you're the MD or the main shareholder and you're trying to push the sale through, if it falls through then and you are looking at exiting, you don't want that to impact on the future value of the business. The second team is, I would say, get a really good professional services secondary team around you so a very good solicitor a very good corporate finance good accountancy good accountant because sometimes you'll need your hand holding sometimes you'll need a sounding board and sometimes you might need a little bit of direction which can be a difficult difficult uh, discussion with your accountant and solicitors and then lastly probably the main thing where i find where owner managed businesses and people have exited particularly if, it, if it's a hard exit you need to think about what you're going to do. What's your purpose going to be post-sale? Because on a Friday, you will lock up the keys to your industrial unit, you'll hand over your keys to the offices, and you might never go back to that place again. So what are you going to do nine to five, Monday to Friday, when you've got your friends that are still working, um, you, you've got your partners who have had a, a life and they're not going to want to change their life. You might have children who you've been working six days a week, 12 hours a day to try and build up the business. What is your purpose going to be post-sale? That's, that's a really good point. I know some people really embrace that and some people find that really hard, don't Correct, they? Correct, yeah, definitely. In summary then, Stuart, what would you say are the, probably the key things to think about? So I, I go back right to the very start and... and there's four questions, but the two main ones are, just think about, if you were to retire last Friday, how much money would you need per week? How much money would you need per month to maintain yours and your family's standard of living? So again, I'll go back to £10,000 a month, £120,000 a year. That's £2.5 to £3 million invested at 4 or 5%. However, you may be mortgages you need to pay off. There may be places that you wish to buy in Spain or Abbasoc or Italy or wherever. There might be things that you're looking at doing, around the world cruises, there might be weddings. So build in those one-off capital um, payments also. And then once you've got that figure, you've also got the professional fees and tax, and then you can come up with, well, I need two and a half million pounds, three million pounds to invest to give me 10,000 pounds per month. 
I've got to pay my mortgage off, buy a place in Spain. There's another million pound, my professional fees, half a million pound, and then the tax at 1.5. So you know the minimum you need is six million pound before you start even considering a sale. Now you might want 20, but if someone comes in at 12 or 14 million pound, cash up front with no deferment, at least you're in a position where you can make that value judgment. So the two questions I, uh, two questions that I would say to answer is, how much is enough and when's the right time? Considering all of that, what I've just ran through, sit down with your advisor, we can help plan for this with your accountant and with your solicitor, and we can make sure that that journey is, 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 um, has as little risk as possible. Thank you, Stuart. So there's a lot of different things involved in this and things to consider. Obviously, we've got some great advisors at Pareto that you can have these conversations with. So on to the random part of the podcast. If you could do anything and money was no object, what would you like to do? I had children at a very early age. Uh, my youngest is now 17, going into um, last year at um, sixth form, going to university. I would... I would love to get a Volkswagen camper van, get a couple of mountain bikes in the back, a bodyboard, and just travel around Europe for 12 months. If um, anyone's playing golf down in the south of Spain or Portugal, drive down there. Uh, if the kids are skiing up in Leger, take a little drive up to Leger. If I'm not doing anything in the next month, go up to see the Northern Lights, drive down to Biarritz, and just for 12 months be able to sit around eat bread, eat cheese, eat ham, drink red wine, water and bodyboard. So you've not really thought about it, Not no. at all, no. no. <laughs> Thanks, Stuart. Appreciate your time today. So this podcast is a part of a series that we've recorded. So please make sure that you sub subscribe. Check out our other podcasts on who we are, looking at estate and tax planning, protecting your assets, retirement planning, growing your wealth, cash flow planning, protecting your business and employee benefits. As always, the information provided in our podcast is general in nature and should not be relied upon without seeking specific professional financial advice. If you would like to speak to someone regarding your personal circumstances, please feel free to get in contact with us for a free one hour consultation. Thank you very much. Thank you everyone.